Hey folks, this is Terry. It's March 12th and we have a month's worth of fun updates for you from the proto school world. Um, yeah, so let's see what we have on deck. Um, first thing we wanted to talk about is a new tutorial. So Zay, I'll let you go into that one. Yeah, so let me share my screen. So the first, uh, so this tutorial we we pulled up from uh, Alan's workshop in Epifest Camp lab, uh, last year. Uh, so this part, the new tutorial is anatomy of a CID. In this tutorial, we go in depth into the uh, the CID, the, the its components and parts. We have six lessons, and the, it is the first uh, tutorial that actually includes uh, multiple choice options. So with this, you can make sure that you write everything correctly and then move on to the next one. If you somehow you didn't get it correctly, you'll get some hints about why that is and then for you to help and, and get the right information. Um, we've got some nice visuals from, from, the, um, from the slide decks from, from the presentation. Uh, so you get some, some nice, uh, nice information displayed out and with infographics to help you along the way. Yeah, so this is uh, exciting. and taking into account that now we have a total of two uh, tutorials with um, the no coding ex uh, no coding necessary we now include a filter so now you can uh, toggle out coding tutorials so that you only see the ones that do not require coding so in this case uh, if you want to just for example you can even do this on your mobile if you want uh, just read through multiple choice testing and yeah you're good to go Awesome. The other thing that you might have noticed in that little demo is that this one is labeled as a multi-formats tutorial. Um, so if you're not familiar with multi-formats and wondering why we took a course from IPFS camp and it's not labeled as an IPFS course, it's because uh, multi-format supplies a lot of like formats of self-describing data or self-describing protocols that support a lot of the DWeb products that um, not just protocol apps, but a lot of the protocol apps ones. So IPFS, libp2p, Filecoin, IPLD, they all use multi-formats for their CIDs. So by labeling this as a multi-formats tutorial, we, we did it that way intentionally so that you can find it. If you're interested in Filecoin, this applies to you too. Um, and when you're looking for the specs for the CID, you find them in the multi-formats repo, which I'm sure is one of the resources that's there at the end of that tutorial. So. Um, we're psyched to have tutorial from more than one project and we expect that to continue in the months to come. We hope to add some basic Filecoin explainers, et cetera. Um, one of the other things we should probably highlight is that these multiple choice lessons, they're a lot easier to build than the coding challenges. So it would be very easy for someone who didn't have a coding background to set them up. And Zay's done a lot of work to make things even easier under the hood recently. Um, so if you're interested in building one, there's a template you can use to get started and it's very easy to figure out where to copy and paste the right content in to do that. So hope we'll get some volunteers there. Um, yeah, anything else that you wanted to share, Zay, on, you have new content coming up, well, tweaked content coming up. Yeah, so right now we're working on uh, some updates to the JavaScript uh, library for IPFS, uh, which they recently did some workarounds so they can have major improvements, performance improvements. And so the API changed a little bit and that will reflect along on the tutorials. Uh, mainly the um, uh, mutable uh, file system tutorial and also the regular files API tutorial. So those two will be updated. Uh, in the, uh, we're not sure uh, when that will happen, but maybe most likely we'll also add a small message warning so that you can see that the tutorial has been updated. So that if you want to do it again or see the, the code uh, and how the code uh, has changed, so you can be notified as well if you've done the tutorial before. So yeah, that's exciting as well. Yeah, um, and if you haven't already heard about the async await refactor, you can find more about it on the IPFS blog as a really good starting point to get to that. Um, you can learn all about async iterators if you haven't explored them yet. So, uh, yeah, what 
else do we have for you? Next, full screen so I can find out. Uh, yeah, let's talk about the new community model. I will share my screen for a second. If I can find the right place to do that. All right. So, uh, exciting news on our website. You can see here a new events page where you can find specific upcoming events. In the past, you'd go to a chapters page and see the names of the locations of various chapters, click on one of those, go to a GitHub repo, poke around there and see if they had any events coming up. But now you can go straight here and see if there's anything coming up near you. Um, and you'll notice a few things that are really helpful here. So there's a link and the, the person submitting this event for inclusion on the website determines whether these links are here, but if this event is hosted by a group, like an IPFS meetup group, for example, then you can link to the homepage of that group. If it's hosted at a conference, like we had a workshop hosted at Web3 Summit in Berlin, then you could see that it's hosted at that event, learn more about that event. You'll be able to see which tutorials are being discussed at that event. If you wanna go and look at those in advance, You'll have a link to the code of conduct for that event and then a link right to the registration site for that event. So we're really trying to make it easier for attendees to find upcoming Proto School workshops that focus on our content. Um, and then of, we, I've filled in some past events that clearly meet our event guidelines here. So you may see that your, some of the events from your chapters are there. Um, people can look at those mostly as a way to go and see how much activity is happening in their area. Um, and then there are, of course, instructions on how to host an event updated on the website, but you'll also see, as always, that um, the organizing repo is still the right place to go for information on hosting events. So we did a pretty dramatic overhaul of this page yesterday to reflect this new model. So the real, the really important highlights in the change to our community need model, which were so heavily influenced by those of you who took the local leadership survey are this concept of scalability we wanted to make it both we wanted to reduce the burden on existing folks who are leading groups so we saw for example that pretty much everyone hosting a chapter had a an existing meetup group it might have been an ipfs meetup group for example that was doing a variety of content and then they applied for a chapter, which took a little while to get set up. We created a repo for them. And then they would sometimes intersperse our content into their meetings. So they might do three sessions of someone giving a talk on IPFS. And then at the fourth week, they would present a tutorial for Proto School. Um, in this new model, that works, but you it's totally fine to do that and mix our content in. We think that will still be the most common thing that people do. But the event that that workshop on that fourth week that you where you actually teach our content is the thing that you would refer to as a proto school workshop and that you would submit for inclusion on our events page um, the groups that host our events or the individuals who host our events won't be called chapters moving forward so we don't have the concept of chapters but that also opens it up so for example we had some cities where there were multiple groups that wanted to host content and we had been asking them to work together, which made some folks uncomfortable. And what we really wanna do is make it possible for as many people as possible to share our content. So um, we can have a variety of folks in our larger cities sharing in other groups. And it's a way to get our content into a bunch of existing communities that are out there and also, um, and also have us surface those communities to the world, right? If somebody finds us on the web, they can find you through us and they can find us through you. Um, so now when you're figuring out whether to submit an event, you're gonna look at the guidelines that are right here, as well as on the organizing page. So to define something as a proto school workshop, it's gonna offer someone the chance to work through one of our tutorials, the ones you find on our tutorials page in person with support from mentors. Um, we do still require a code of conduct to enforce a, a welcoming and inclusive environment where everyone feels welcome and isn't subject to discrimination, et cetera. 
Um, and there is more guideline. If you go to our resources page, I've added some templates that people can use. Previously, when we made a chapter for you, we were giving you a template that you could use if you wanted to. So we have something similar that people can use uh, if they'd like. And then the events should be educational, not commercial or promotional and they should be not for profit. So free or low cost to attendees. If you have to cover your costs of meeting space or something, you could do that. But um, this is really meant to be educational um, first and foremost for the events that you call Proto School Workshops. Um, so that's, those are the guidelines. And if your event meets these guidelines, then you would click here to add your event to our list and it would go to this lovely little form. So you're gonna give us your email address, Make sure that you qualify. Let us know which specific tutorials uh, you're going to be teaching at that event. And this is, will also be a good flag for you if you're not planning on teaching these, then it's not an event that should be on our website, code of conduct URL, et cetera. And then as you go through this form, we'll ask you for your city, the date, et cetera, all of the information that we need to make that card that you saw on the events page. Um, and this really fits with a variety of formats. So if you're leading a meetup group, you can incorporate the content in there. If you're going to a conference like the Web3 Summit, you could uh, run a one-off event at that event. Um, if you're working in a university setting where you have like a public, a student group that allows visitors in from outside, you could host an event there. Um, so lots of options. And there's some documentation here on kind of what happened to the chapter model. For right now, we do, we do still have the chapters page available here, so at the same URL it was, but we've just added a note that people can now find the upcoming events quicker by going to our events page. At the end of April, we will remove this page and have it redirect to the events page. So for those of you who have been leading chapters, you're gonna wanna go to this uh, community model update page think of that as your transition guide. So it's gonna talk about both what this change means for learners, but also what it means for you and a few steps you need to take. A little more on when to use the Proto School name and the fact that you don't need to use GitHub anymore. So that means that we're also gonna be phasing out those chapter repos that we made for you. If you love the repo as a way to share your content or communicate with your attendees through issues, et cetera, if GitHub is working for you, our goal isn't to take it away but it, it wasn't serving anyone for it to live in our organization. So what we'll do is if you'd like to do that, reach out to us by the end of April and we can transfer the ownership of the repo to another user or organization so that you can keep that somewhere else um, and use it how you like. And if we don't hear from you by the end of April, then we'll archive your repo with a note that we're, using, we're not using the chapter model anymore, this is historical data and you won't be able to update that. So we'd encourage you if that's what you wanna do to go in and put a link there to whatever is the best source for your group. If you like to work from Meetup, that's great. If you put all your events on Eventbrite, that's great. So uh, we're really trying to make it so you're using the tools that work for, best for you and not duplicating your work as a lot of people were in the past system. Um, yeah, and so you'll continue to find stuff in our resources repo. The other thing I just want to mention is we now have a newsletter. Um, the only way we have had to contact our chapter leaders so far is through GitHub. We have a, um, a group list for them so I can tag in issues, but based on everyone's individual notification settings, you may or may not get an email when I announce things like this community change. So moving forward, we're going to use a newsletter and there are kind of two segments here. So if you don't check this box, then the news you'll get here is about new tutorials that we've launched or new site features like that toggle button, anything that's like a, has a big impact on users. We're not gonna to, to spam people here. Um, so this is a sign up page that you could share with your attendees to encourage them to sign up for our news. Um, but if you would like to host events and you wanna get news on local leadership stuff, so if we add a new resource, a new slide deck, um, new tips on hosting events, then we'll send that out only to the people who have checked this box for local leadership updates. So please do take the time if you've been running a chapter to go ahead and um, fill that out for us so we can reach you that way. So we're really excited. The, the event that you see on the, on the events page right now is from someone who hadn't led a chapter in the past. And the other a uh, submission we've had in that event form is from someone else who hasn't led a chapter in the past. So we already have evidence that this is really gonna open things up 
to a lot of people who are interested in doing this in a variety of formats. So really excited about the change. Um, we hope that you'll find everything you need in that transition guide, but if you have questions, you can reach us, protoschool at protocol.ai. Um, yeah, so excited about that. Just scanning through the notes to see if we did anything else we wanted to share today. Oh, one thing I should mention in this uh, interesting time we're all going through is that we do expect the event listings to be light right now. We understand that a lot of communities are dealing with uh, the coronavirus and not and hosting large events is not wise in many of those communities. So please do heed the advice of the World Health Organization, your local authorities. Situations are very different place to place. So we leave it in your hands to be sure that you're only holding events if it's safe to do so in your community. And this system is here for when you're ready. If it's the summer before your community can host events, we are here for you in the summer. So so let it ride as long as you need to get your get your social connections online and then we'll see you then. And you can remind your attendees, if you have a, a communication path with the folks who have come to your past events, you can remind them that, that all of our content is available online and encourage them to go check it out there. You could even set up some kind of local um, support system for answering questions or whatever. So feel free to experiment with stuff and, and tell us what's working online. Uh, anything else today that I'm forgetting? I think that's it, yeah. Cool. All right. So. Lovely to see you all virtually today, and we will catch you for our update next month. Take care. Bye-bye.